Good morning, flower friends. Today I am going to plant up this self-watering window box. This is one of those cheap little plastic things, or resin, that came from Walmart several years ago. I don't even know if they still carry them, but I know there are some available everywhere, Amazon, etc. I'll try to find you some and, and link to them. These have been just great for me. The self-watering feature um, helps because they're not very deep. So on the hot summer days, it has a reservoir to pull from and it does it quickly enough and it's built in a way that it doesn't seem none of them have rotted. So last year, I had petunias in these, wave petunias that had come back from the prior year. They had self-seeded. I do not dump these out in the fall, in the winter. I just tuck them somewhere in the garden, um, out of the way, um, not even in the greenhouse all the time. Some of them were in the greenhouse, some were just left in place. Um, and the petunias that are in it, they go to seed and they self-seed. So they come back. And the alyssum, this is tiny Tim alyssum for botanical interests. It comes back and you can see this is just full of it. I've been meaning to get to this window box for a while and I haven't. But I have another wave petunia. I have this one planted in the other window box. This one is wave um, lilac. So, and it's a real pretty blush, got a little yellow in there, but a, a light lavender. There are some seedlings in here of the petunias coming back but not as many as in others. So I'm gonna put more petunias in this. This is a pot full of seedlings that came back. This one I did not plant. These are seedlings from a petunia that was in this last year, and I think it was a pretty bright pink. So these will go together well in here. I am also gonna move some of these out so that um, I can place them elsewhere because I don't need that many in here. So basically, how I do that, I'm gonna put my glove on this hand. I don't have my glove for this hand, so I'm one gloved. I find, I decide where I want the petunias. Also, I look for, and I'm gonna do that right now, the, the seedling petunias. Now, I don't see any around here, so I could put a petunia here. This one is a little close, this Alyssa, so I will dig it out. So it's, I just have this little baby trowel. I got this from Gardener Supply and I just love this thing. Now if I, it's not big enough to do the job, which it is, um, then I would just go to my garden knife to dig it out. This is a Fiskars, I think Fiskars? Yep, Fiskars garden knife. Comes in handy for different jobs. Now I'm just going to set these aside until I have a place to put them. Now you may wonder because this is the same potting soil that I had in here last year. I don't worry about it. The potting soil is just a medium to hold the plant. Because they're in containers, I give them an organic liquid feed. I'm trying a new one this year. I am loving it. And I will share later when I have a full idea of how well it works. Um, or maybe not. Maybe I'll just tell you. In one of my next videos, I'll, I'll bring it out and I'll show you. That way you can try it too if you really want to. But I really like it. I like how it's made. I like that it's environmentally friendly, earth friendly, and meaning it feeds the um, microorganisms in your soil and not just the plant. That's very important in organic gardening because you want to always build your soil. So these have really lovely roots. Great. Right now I'm going to be quick about getting those into something later just so they don't get all dried out. So. There's another one right here. They, they're so thick in here. And this makes it easier than have, rather than, I didn't even start any from seed this year. Whoops, I broke it. Um, like I usually do, because I had so many come back in these containers. Now, also, if you live in a very cold climate, you could put a container like this, full of those seeds, into an unheated garage or something like that, basement. And then, um, they would overwinter and then bring it out in spring when it's starting to warm up. And they will sprout just beautifully like these. These, in fact, this one needs to be deadheaded so that it keeps blooming. These tiny Tim does not have to be. It just would tidy it up here and uh, make it a little bit bushier. So here is, I'm gonna move this out of the way. Move this over here. This is 
the petunia and there are so many in here I may just grab a bunch and yeah I'm gonna grab just a huge bunch and pull them out I'm not going to divide them individually and I'm just going to put that bunch right here and let them go for it you could I could have divided that maybe in two but I didn't want to shock the roots too much um, oh, another alyssum. And that way I, they would get going. It's not a big deal if they're all in here together. They, mine did beautifully. I'm going to show you a picture right now of mine from last year in these window boxes. And they just did fantastically. And most of them were returns from, or I should say all of them were, returns from the prior year. So you can see how well it works. Okay, I'm going to keep on going along here and plant up the rest of these. Now there will be little gaps of where I need to add more soil. So I have my DIY compost I have here, which is a mix of a compost I get from a local turkey farm organic turkey farm, some perlite, and some coconut core. And so that will fill in the little gaps of where I took out plants with the soil. And it refreshes the soil that's in there. But this soil, because of my mix, um, it stayed pretty loose. The only thing that's clumped are the roots that are already in there. So it's not gotten really, um, what'd you say, compressed. That's when, I don't use peat moss for that reason. Peat moss will, over time, compress, as well as harvesting of it is not environmentally friendly. So I have gone to um, rice hulls, coconut core, and stuff like that be in place of peat moss. So let's see this. There's a big, big, where's my little clippers? Did I not bring them? Oh, they're right here. Another thing, favorite tool I've got this year, I'm gonna clip this one back and it will make it a little bit more bushy. Those ones I can't, I can't, be, can't bear to um, chop off yet, but I will because you know, they've already bloomed out here. Oh, I should be tough. Okay, I'm gonna, okay. That one I'll leave just for the fun of it. Okay, this one, bushy, bushy, bushy. I need to figure out which one to take out. And there's an, a weed in here. That can go. All right. I want uh, an Alyssa between the petunias, so that one can stay, but this one right here can go. I should have had a bucket of water to put these in. many and that's a good thing because you know some of them may not survive being transplanted but most of them do I've got a whole I've got 50 of them in the greenhouse I did this from the other one okay some more petunias coming up don't know what that was all righty Now, if I wanted to divide these up, I could. See, there's one. It's got a pretty good root on it. Actually, it's two. That one's smaller. So let's see. I'll put that one in there on that side. And I'll put this one on this side. These little babies are much smaller because they're competing. Um, if I put them up in their own pot, they may just go ahead and take off. So here's where I'm going to add more soil. Now it will take a little while for these to get blooming, but you probably would be surprised at how quickly it does. And then the show come later on, probably July, will be fantastic. And basically it was free because I didn't pay for the plants. I already had everything here. And um, well, I guess you say I paid for this. <laughs> so the dirt, whatever that would cost you. 
A good bag of potting soil here in Northern California is about $10. So, and you can see I'm not using that much, but if I had to fill this, I probably would use, you know, a quarter of a bag. So that should give you an idea how much. Now there's a baby petunia right here that I'm gonna leave. This alyssum is all good here. I've got a truck coming up the hill, so forgive the noise, but I'm gonna put another petunia or few right here. Oh, it sounds like it's the propane man. So this is a little bitty one. I'm gonna put that one in there and some others that kind of got uprooted. See if they take off. Now with the wave petunias, they get, they drape and they are so healthy and they do so well for me. They do much better than other um, hanging petunias that I always go for them. And the beauty is they also will recede. I bought. So I'm gonna show you my other container um, that I did just last week and how well it's filling in. Now, if you want to know, so this container here that I took them out of, I will continue to thin these out, plant them in other containers or even in the ground, and I'll leave one or two in here and I'll put some of the alyssum in here and I'll put it in a spot in the garden where it can just shine. So let's go look at the other container and I'll show you where I'm going to put this one. So right here is the one we just planted up. Now I'll go get um, my organic liquid for fertilizer and give it a light one. I'll, I'll dilute it um, so we don't put anything into shock. And I will trim back. Let me go ahead and get my cutters and do that. Trim back some of the alyssum because it has bloomed and it will just promote more blooms. So I'm giving it a, just a good, I'm cutting off a good inch or more and leaving a good inch. And basically that's it. Just trim it back, give it a good feed, and it will again fill in. And one thing, Tiny Tim has the most fragrant, florifice blooms. They just are so abundant. And let me cut off the spent blooms on the petunia too. And there's an alyssum that had roots that I missed pulling out. Okay, so here is the other, other one that I planted. You can see how much better it's doing. In fact, I might put some of these petunias in that. Oh, no, that one has a bunch of babies coming up that reroot. But look, that had already um, seeded themselves. But see, I had given this alyssum a trim and look how it's coming back and, it, and it's blooming beautifully and it was just a week ago. So that's what I'm hoping to get with doing a little light prune on this one. So I hope that was informative on how you can plant up a window box on the cheap. And I'm going to show you some other window boxes that um, they also, I can show you the petunias are coming up in volunteer. So this is one that had reseeded itself full of petunias. The alyssum isn't in here. Um, so I will transplant some of those alyssum into this one. These petunias do need to be thinned, so I will do that. And um, I'll, I'll trim back the violas, but I'll leave them in there because they will come back and they'll be fine and the white will go well with the petunias. But I'll show you the one next to it where alyssum has come back and plenty of petunias too. And, and they'll thicken up and just be as lush as the ones I showed you um, from last year. So that is how to get some free window boxes or flower filled window boxes for free.